dynamic, young, coming from the court right to uh, the bench. And it is Derek Fisher, and he's nice enough to join us right now here on the home of the Knicks, ESPN New York, 98.7 FM. Derek, it's Michael Kay and Don LaGreca. How you doing? And congratulations. Doing great, guys. How you doing? Thank you very much. I just want to read you a tweet that just came out from Kevin Durant. So happy for my brother, Derek Fisher. I can speak for the whole state of Oklahoma when I say we will miss you and we love you. Good luck, Coach. What does that mean to you? Um, wow. No, I mean, just, you know, the, the, the time there in Oklahoma City has been uh, really special. You know, it's, it's a great group of, of players and coaches, and the, the community is just phenomenal. And so it just means a lot to know that, you know, kind of in a short time, um, you know, I was able to, you know, have some positive uh, impact and leave some positive feelings for, you know, for a group of guys, and in particular Kevin Durant. Now this had been rumored for a while, Derek, so during your run in the playoffs, was it difficult or a challenge for you at all not to make that a distraction for you? Not too much. Um, You know, the rumors did, um, you know, Escalate in particular as we got into the Western Conference Finals, it uh, you know seemed to really pick up, uh, and so it, it wasn't um, you know something that was was a was a difficult struggle to kind of balance and keep at bay. But you know it for sure would would enter my mind at times, and you know it seemed like every week uh, that passed in these in these 2014 playoffs, it was possibly my last week as a player, and so you know the combination of those thoughts and the rumors and you know still competing for a championship it was a difficult balance but um you know i felt like i gave my best effort to help our team and you know we we came up six wins short now i watched that uh, the last game you played and boy scott brooks never took you out toward the end so it shows you how valuable he still thinks you are and when the game was over Derek, it seemed to me you were taking it all in you were trying to remember it am i accurate because it took you a long time to get off that court yeah no i mean you know first uh, i mean scotty brooks has been amazing to me as a person and as a player uh, when I got traded from the Lakers a couple of years ago um, you know I was quote unquote effectively done and um, you know the opportunity he provided for me there in Oklahoma City to, to still be a valuable member of a really good team uh, it's just been a great experience I'm thankful for that uh, and that last you know yeah that last moment there when the buzzer went off and the game was over in Oklahoma City you know I didn't know for sure if that was going to be, you know, my last uh, game played, but that was the first time I'd ever really uh, had to think about it like that. And I for sure wanted to take some mental pictures of it and, uh, you know, have some things to walk off of that court with as I walk down the tunnel. All right, let's talk about your new job with the Knicks. You said today you believe this team can be successful right away. Why do you feel so strongly about that? Well, in my opinion, I believe that success uh, and failure are not as far apart as people like to think. Uh, it's pretty close. And when you think about the team winning 37 games a year ago, um, there are a number of things that you can isolate um, with the same exact roster that could provide 8 to 10 more wins um, without a change of any kind. Um, you can make more free throws. Uh, you, you can... You can um, you can have a, a, a player miss a few more games, miss due to injury, uh, by handling some things smartly with practice time and uh, recovery time and uh, nutrition, et cetera. There are a number of things that are the difference between winning and losing. Uh, when I was a player, uh, I got traded to the Utah Jazz in 2006. The team won 41 games uh, the year before I got traded there. Uh, I did a radio interview where I said that I believe uh, there are some things that I can help our team do to help us win 10 more games this season. And sure enough, not that I was magical, but we won 51 games the following season with essentially the same roster. Uh, But the devil is in the details. And I think with this group, uh, with myself, and as we fill out our coaching staff, uh, Phil Jackson's mentorship and, and his knowledge as a basketball mind, we can we can do a ton of things that will help this team be far better than it was last year, even if it is the exact same team. Now, Derek, obviously you were you were a very uh, substantial leader wherever you were, but it's different leading on the court and leading off the court. Will you make phone calls to 
Jason Kidd and Doc Rivers to say, you know, what's some of the hurdles I'm going to have to deal with? Yeah, no, I, I agree. It is different, you know, leading from uh, the coaching position uh, as opposed to being a teammate, you know, or a peer in the locker room. Uh, and, and that's something that I'll, you know, learn as I go along, those differences. Uh, but uh, for sure I'm going to rely on, you know, other coaches, other resources uh, to understand a little bit more of, uh, you know, things to know, do's and don'ts, et cetera. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm confident in, in who I am and the things that I believe in uh, that provide success. Uh, I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm flexible. I'm, I'm willing to do things uh, in different ways. Uh, so I'm not walking in here with an ironclad blueprint for everything that's going to happen. Uh, and so I'll, I'll utilize everyone, uh, Jason Kidd, Doc Rivers, anyone that is willing to talk, to share, um, my ears are open, uh, but at the end of the day, I'll still have to be, you know, confident and sure in who I am, and ultimately make final decisions. Derek, your boss Phil Jackson has eleven rings as a coach, and maybe coaching this team if had be a little younger or maybe even a little healthier. Do you think he might be a little bit more hands on than maybe somebody else in that position because of all that he has done as a head coach? Uh, that's a that's a great question. Um, you know, Phil might be able to, you know, answer it better. Um, I, I don't have a problem with uh, Phil being a hands-on executive, so to speak, or uh, another basketball mind and expert uh, to blend with our, you know, our coaches. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's a better position to be in as a coach uh, to have, like you said, a coach that won 11 <laughs> NBA World right. Championships as a coach uh, walking downstairs or walking out on the court and sharing all of that uh, success and knowledge and information with you and your coaches. Uh, I, I see it as a huge positive and, and, and look forward to it. Um, uh, it's, it's part of the, uh, you know, what makes this such a special opportunity, and I'm, and I'm really, really looking forward to it, honestly. Listen, Derek, if he gets too pushy, just say, listen, you'd only have six without me, okay? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. That in mind. <laughs> All right, everybody in New York wants to know this, and it seems like when the Nick people answer it, and you answered it today, I don't know, maybe I'm reading it, that it's lukewarm. Derek, do you want Carmelo back? Do you think that a team can win a championship with Carmelo Anthony? Yes. There's, there's, I want to be extremely clear that um, I would love to have the opportunity to work uh, and coach Carmelo Anthony. I want him to be back uh, with the New York Knicks and to remain a part of what we're trying to do here and what we will do. Uh, so I don't think anyone is expressing a lukewarm feeling about wanting him back. I just think we're all trying to be respectful uh, as people, uh, Carmelo's a great person. Uh, he's a family guy, and they have decisions that are sometimes independent of what's best for everybody else. And so we respect that process. And so I just think, you know, Phil, myself, Steve Mills, we're trying hard not to turn this into a, uh, you know, a Carmelo, please stay type of process. Uh, at the same time, we have no problem expressing that we do want him to be a part of this team. We feel like we can win a championship um, with him as our core and centerpiece. Can, can you help me out with one thing, though? Because we, we, we end up defending Carmelo every day on this show, and it seems like Nick fans go, oh, you can't win a championship with a guy like that. He doesn't play defense. He, he hogs the ball. You've been a champion. You've been a champion five times. You've played with Durant. You've played with Kobe. Can Carmelo be the centerpiece of a championship team? Uh, yes, he can. He actually has done it before at the collegiate level. Mm -hmm. um, he hasn't done it at the pro level yet, uh, yet being the operative word. Uh, but I do honestly believe uh, that he is capable of being the leader of a championship team. Uh, he's had USA basketball experience. He's won a gold medal. He knows what it takes to win. Uh, but this is basketball, and it's a team game. Uh, and so we have a responsibility uh, if Carmelo chooses to continue to be with the New York Knicks, we have a responsibility to do everything in our power uh, with him, but also next to him and around him uh, to, to allow this team to be as successful as it possibly can be. It does not all ride on Carmelo Anthony. It, it can't be uh, just him night in and night out. 
we have to make the game easier for him and easier for everybody on our team uh, to be effective and, and help us win games. Now, you had mentioned in the pursuit of, of Melo, you don't want to go too over the top with it because there's negotiations to go in. But don't you think as a former player, Derek, that there are players that they want to be courted? They want to be told how much they're liked and how much that they want that player to stay with that organization? Um, I, I do believe that is true. And I, and I don't, you know, I, I can't speak for Carmelo. I don't think that he believes in any way that Phil or Steve Mills or myself or, or Mr. Dolan uh, in any way don't want him back or are not trying to court him or whatever it is that needs to be done to help him understand we want him here. Uh, Phil stated in the press conference today earlier that there's a meeting planned in the near future to discuss that more. Uh, and so I don't think it's a question of him not believing uh, that he is wanted back in a major, major, major way. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the question. I just think that Carmelo, as a player, at least from my experience, wants to maybe experience what the free agent process is like, um, not meaning that he's already made up his mind that he doesn't want to be here. Uh, and if that's the case, that's not in our control. It's in his control. Uh, but we'll do everything we can. Uh, to to help him believe that we can win and with him, and we want it to be with him. We're talking with the new New York Knicks head coach, Derek Fisher. Derek, um, there, did you have any trepidation whatsoever about signing up and being a coach in an organization where Jim Dolan is the owner? There's been a lot of turnover in the basketball operations department. A lot of coaches have come and gone. Did you have any trepidation at all accepting this job because of that? No, not because of those reasons at all. Uh, the trepidation or, you know, the concerns were on a large scale with, you know, things that we all consider when we're making a big life decision. You know, you're you're picking your family up and moving from one coast to another. Uh, you're, you're transitioning from maybe, uh, you know, one part of a profession to a completely different part of the same profession but a completely different role and responsibility. Um, you know, you have to shut the door immediately to this thing that you've done for 30 years of your life and now do another thing. Uh, so, you know, the trepidations were more of the real-life trepidations, not uh, uh, not the culture of the Knicks or Mr. Dolan or, or any of those things. Because, um, to be honest, guys, in sports, um, and I think you've seen it, you know, as well, you know, there have been a lot of coaches that have won a lot of games that, don't have a job the next year and you know new ownership comes in and coaches aren't popular anymore or their front office or basketball operations changes and these are things that just happen in our business now and if you get uh if you get caught up in those things and not focus on just doing the job the best job you can do uh it's a losing proposition and so i i, I focused more on the, pro- the positives of this opportunity and then like i said the, the real life concerns that uh making this move would, would mean Listening to the Michael K. Show here on WEPN and WEPN HD1 New York. Did you talk to Jim Dolan at all before you signed the deal? I did not. I did not. All of my conversations were directly with Phil and with Steve Mills. Um, and, you know, that was it. Um, I'm, I would imagine that, that Mr. Dolan was aware of the conversations. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure of Phil and Steve Mills' communication pattern, how often he, they spoke to Mr. Dolan and how often they kept him up to date. Uh, but I would imagine he was aware <laughs> of the process, but I didn't speak to him directly. I'm sure we'll speak um, really soon and, um, you know, have the opportunity to get to know each other beyond just uh, being in the same room during collective bargaining. Derek, did it bother you you were not the Knicks' first choice? No, uh, it didn't. Um, you know, I think that's you know, another one of those things that just makes me who I am. Um, I, I, you know, I've never been, uh, you know, the first choice per se of <laughs> just about anybody. Um, when I, you know, I went to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, uh, where the head coach, when I first arrived, didn't think I was that good and didn't want to offer me a scholarship. Uh, so these are things that I've experienced before uh, in terms of, you know, not being the most gifted or the, you know, the tallest or the best or the number one choice. Uh, and I, I just don't get caught up in those things. Uh, I just really focus on the things that are in front of me and the opportunities I have that exist at that moment, try and make the best decision that I can at that time and go from there. And there is no question that this was, you know, a great decision. 
I'm looking forward to this opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for Steve Kerr. He took advantage of the opportunity he found in Golden State. Uh, it just seemed like this was the way it was supposed to end up in the first place, and I'm happy it was me. Now, Derek, um, the stories I read at the beginning of the season when you said this was probably going to be your last year playing, you said that, you know, at the age of 39, you want to spend some time with your family before the next chapter. Did this job just come where you, you said to your family, listen, this might be a once-in-a-lifetime thing, i got to grab it? Was it tough because you wanted to spend time with your family? Yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, all of those are the, the trepidations or the real-life things that you work through before, you know, making a huge decision. Um, you know, when I, when I made that statement at the beginning of the season, um, it, was, it was the truth. And, and still is the truth from the standpoint of, um, you know, wanting to make sure that as I transition in life, uh, you know, there's a balance there uh, and that, you know, you only get one chance to raise your kids and, and, and be in their life in a particular way. Uh, and so uh, for me, that was a lot of what I considered, you know, before accepting this job. But I think as a family, uh, we still feel confident that even with these responsibilities uh, and the schedule, et cetera, uh, as long as we are in the same place, uh, we will be fine. We'll, we'll still be a family. And, uh, you know, this last year or so was really challenging. I was in Oklahoma City. My family's back in L.A. Uh, that, that's, that doesn't work for us. You know, we like to be together. Uh, so, you know, I'm coming to New York, and, and we're all coming to New York. Now, if, if the Nick job wasn't open, Derek, would you have retired or would you have played again? I mean, was there a pull to play again? Because obviously you could still play. No, I'm, I'm glad you're one of two people that think I could uh, possibly still play. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, I do think that, um, you know, there was a call there and a pull there to still possibly play. Uh, if this opportunity had not uh, been there, uh, I would have strongly considered possibly still playing um, because I, I, I did feel like I could still be effective and, and help a team. But, uh, you know, there are things in life that happen that we – never gain understanding of. We don't know how it happened, why it happened, why it showed up uh, until much farther down the line uh, or after we look back at it. And so when this opportunity uh, became a reality uh, that I really could become the head coach of the New York Knicks, uh, it wasn't so much about um, you know being sad about not being able to play anymore, uh, but more excited uh, for what I've always seen as just an, you know, the next phase or an evolution uh, of a long, you know, professional career, and and I'm excited. Now, Derek, uh, I don't know how much of the Knicks you saw, but they did have spotty point guard play this year. Did you ever think about player coach? Would, could that ever happen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's allowed in the in the collective bargaining agreement. And anymore. you were part of that I don't agreement. Think you can officially, be a player coach, uh, but no, I will make sure that. These players understand my playing days are far <laughs> over, uh, even though right now they've only been two weeks over. <laughs> um, but, you know, by the time we start camp and, and this thing kicks up, um, you know, there will be no <laughs> no concept of me playing again. It's going to all be on them to play, and I'll be coaching, and we're going to figure out how to be successful. Was the Laker job ever a possibility? Was it ever offered to you? Did they talk to you at all? No, we uh, we never had any formal discussions. I, I uh, they did reach out uh, to get permission from the Oklahoma City Thunder uh, to contact me, possibly for the head coaching position. Uh, but we never had a formal interview, sit down uh, discussion about it. Uh, and so, you know, I, they decided to move in a different direction. Although I I don't know if I was ever really, um, you know, something that they considered and. I obviously didn't consider it because it was never offered to me. So, um, you know, I'm happy, more than happy, with uh, having this opportunity, and I don't feel like that was an opportunity that was missed in any way. Um, the numbers that are out there are impressive. Did you ever think that head coaching could be this lucrative, $25 million for five years? No. Um, <laughs> I never really played for those reasons. Right. And, you know, not coaching for those reasons, but, you know, because it's public information for the most part, we, we obviously have to be, um, you know, understanding of the fact that, uh, you know, we're very, very fortunate in this business, um, regardless of at what level, you know, playing, coaching, um, 
you know, we're, we're just very fortunate. And there are a lot of people that sacrificed a lot for us to have these opportunities and be in the position that, that we're in right now. Um, but that can't be the reason why. Uh, that can't be the reason why we do this every day. Um, those that are the best, those that become champions, those that succeed at a high level, um, that's not what wakes them up every day. And so, you know, we're going to be a team and a group of people that, uh, you know, despite that, um, you know, we're, we're going to still work hard as though we don't have any of it. As We're, we're going to be hungry and passionate uh, for working hard and being the best that we can be, and our focus is not going to be on those things. You went up against the Spurs, lost to them in six games. How do they continue to do it? It seems like every year this is the last year that Pops could be able to squeeze something out of them, and yet there they are, three wins away from a championship again. How do they do it? Well, it's um, you know, it seems like it's been almost 20 years in the making uh, in terms of uh, you know a, a plan, uh, a belief system, a philosophy uh, that starts with you know Greg Popovich and uh, and their management. Uh, drafting the right players, developing the right players, obviously having core pieces like Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker helped tremendously. Um, but I also think, you know, the, the Greg Popovich's flexibility and willingness to adapt and adjust the style of the team as they went along has been very key as well. Uh, and so it's a great model. Uh, it doesn't work for everyone. We can't all emulate and be the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, but, you know, for us, we have the resources to be who we want to be. Uh, and so we, we have to be the best of, of who we can be uh, at the same time respecting the way other people do it. And the Spurs have definitely done it great for a long time. Well, Derek, we don't know each other that well. I think we know each other 19 minutes now. So if I could just please make a plead with you. Do not treat Doris Burke the way Greg Popovich does when she interviews you at halftime, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll do my best uh, not to, to treat Doris that way. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have uh, done many interviews with Doris as a player. So I, I think we have a good relationship. So as long as Doris doesn't give me the Greg Popovich treatment, I think <laughs> there you go. Fine. All right, triangle. We going with that? Is that is that pretty sure that the triangle will be run in New York? Uh, you know, it's for sure where we're leaning. All right. uh, there's you know, there's no question that um, you know Phil's one of the masters and experts in it. I learned a lot in it and feel as though I'm an expert. And um, you know, I, that's where all indications probably will take us. But you know, we still have to balance out a staff of coaches that we feel like uh, can can accomplish that. You know, you can't have a plan in the system and not have the right people to implement and execute. So, you know, I think we still have to be open-minded about what's going to be best for us. It's obviously all systems and plans depend on your personnel and your talent available as well. Uh, and so, you know, we'll have to make sure that certain things happen on that end uh, in order to be able to run anything we want to run. So, um, you know, but for now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in saying that's probably what we'll do. Uh, but... Um, you know, we, we, we have to just continue to evaluate that as each day goes by and, and um, you know, and see how things go. We keep hearing names like Rambis, Cartwright, Luke Walton. Are they in the running to be your assistants? Um, I, I haven't had those specific discussions yet. Definitely not with any of those individuals. Um, you know, Phil, myself, uh, Steve Mills out in Houston, we'll, we'll start huddling up right away uh, and start going down the names and, and individual candidates and start trying to fill out a staff that we feel like uh, can help our players be uh, be the best. And that's what we want to do. Uh, one of those guys could be on that list, um, but you know we'll, we'll we'll definitely get after that right away, and, and hopefully really soon uh, we'll be able to, to announce to you guys the, the rest of our staff, and you know have a group of men that we feel confident can can lead our team. All right, before we let you go, you're one of the foremost authorities in in running the triangle. You did it for Phil with the Lakers, and. Uh, you know, one of the debates that we've had, does Carmelo fit into the triangle in its truest sense? Do you think if he comes back, he would thrive in that sort of system? Yes. In my opinion, in my humble opinion, yes. I, I believe uh, Carmelo can and, and will thrive in the triangle system. Uh, he is actually the prototypical uh, triangle player because of his versatility. Uh, we can use him at all five positions on the floor. Uh, 
and that's what is the beauty of the system, uh, being able to move players around in different spots on the floor. Uh, and so uh, I believe he can be great, and, and that's why I believe we could be great right away uh, is because we have that guy that we could anchor that system around uh, to make the game easier for him, uh, but also allow for all of our team uh, to be impactful and, and to give us something every single night. Derek, we appreciate you giving us so much time. Just know mm -hmm. this, uh, this this city has not had a Nick championship since 73, and so many people are behind you and rooting for you. And if you get this done, you become part of forever in this city. You just do. So it's a great opportunity for you, and we wish you the best. We really do. I appreciate you guys. Look forward to talking to you lots more. Thanks All a right. lot. Good luck.